now let's talk about managing. If we can define who gets it, who do you test, how do you figure out that this is really C. diff, who has severe, moderate, severe disease, we're left with the obvious question, what do you do about it? So we have guidelines. What do the guidelines say about what factors impact the treatment of C. diff in the first place? Who wants to launch us on that? Uh, I can start on that. So the things that are going to impact the response to treatment of C. diff, whatever agent you're using, are a lot of the same factors that we've been talking about as risk factors for getting C. diff to begin with. So age, people are going to be both more likely to get C. diff and do worse on whatever treatment they're started on. Uh, lack of normal immunity, patients who are immunosuppressed because they've gotten a solid organ transplant, because they have inflammatory bowel disease, or other reasons like that. Um, uh, or other factors that just compromise their normal ability to resist C. diff infection. So these are the things that are going to suggest to you a patient who's going to do less well okay. uh, in response to treatment for C. diff. So patients who are at higher risk, patients who are sicker to begin with, jump on the earlier and more aggressively? And certainly follow more closely for response. Okay, this is whether they're in the hospital or, or outpatients as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, what is the standard of care for C. diff? I mean, vancomycin, metronidazole, we talked about that. Um, why don't we, we start by talking about these, these standard treatments of mild to moderate infection and, and how you use them, how effective they are, and how safe they are. Dr. Branch, you want to start us on that? Well, I think that uh, for mild disease, a first episode, uh, most patients, uh, most uh, physicians will uh, recommend following the guidelines, which start with metronidazole. Okay. Uh, 500 milligrams, uh, four times a day, uh, and uh, for 10 to 14 days. That's mild disease. Uh, and uh, for the most part, uh, this will be effective. Um, but I have to tell you that I'm starting to move away from that. Why is that? Uh, because, number one, metronidazole is a difficult drug to take. It tastes terrible. It uh, causes an uh, upset stomach. You can't drink alcohol with it. So that's an important point. Uh, and I think that the recurrence rates on, uh, which is a very real problem uh, with uh, C. difficile, are greater with metronidazole than they are with vancomycin. So I'm interested in how the infectious disease and other gastroenterologists here, uh, doctors, uh, will agree or disagree with me, but I'm not using metronidazole as much now uh, as I was before. Yeah, I, I agree with Larry. I think there's, although the guidelines do suggest that metronidazole is still valid first-line treatment for mild disease now, patients who have just diarrhea, no systemic signs, that really there are two reasons why you would probably use metronidazole instead of vancomycin. One is cost, so metronidazole, a 10-day course costs tens of dollars instead of hundreds of dollars for vancomycin. Vancomycin's really that much more expensive. Yeah, it's at least a couple hundred dollars more really? expensive. Uh, it's been out a long time. About 1,200 versus about $10. I no idea. But it, but it would be important that although it's $1,200 for the capsules, you can take the liquid intravenous form of the disease by mouth as well if you can get a pharmacist to make it up for you, and you can do that for anywhere from $75 to $100. There are a few additional. I must say that we, too, have uh, switched from metronidazole to mostly vancomycin, and I certainly haven't used metronidazole for any of my patients for quite a few years now. And a few other reasons for that, besides the fact that metronidazole can also be toxic, can be associated with neuropathies, and, and sometimes those are irreversible, is, um, and we also have to remember, by the way, that the guidelines have not been updated in some time and will be updated soon, and I think that there may be some changes. Um, but we have to be uh, conscious about the fact that over the period of time since the last guidelines, there have been emerging data that met we always knew that metronidazole may not be as good as vancomycin for severe disease, but now there is emerging data that it's not also not as good for mild and moderate disease. And also, you have to remember that vancomycin is more elegant because it's topical, topical therapy for a topical disease, you know, a disease that's contained within the colon while metronidazole is systemic therapy, and as, as Eric said earlier, you get less and less metronidazole in the gut as you have less inflammation and less, and less diarrhea. So for all those reasons, I uh, think that vancomycin uh, uh, has become the drug of choice for many patients. Yeah, we have now gotten the largest comparative blinded randomized trial of vancomycin versus metronidazole published with over 250 patients in each arm, and the results show that for all patients, that vancomycin was about 10% more effective than metronidazole 
and statistically very significant. Well, that's 10 percent is a lot. Right. Right. If, if you were to take metronidazole today, which does not have an FDA indication for treating C. diff, and you were to subject it to a phase three trial and it lost by 10 percent, FDA would never approve it. And so, uh, you know, this is all information that's come out since the 2010 guideline. Was I'd like to thank you for validating IDSA. my approach. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, so, if, and, if you say to me, somebody who's not who's not looking at this data as an infectious disease or gastroenterologist, but somebody who treats, I treat an awful lot of C. diff. You tell me that that the metronidazole isn't as effective and is occasionally associated with irreversible neurologic issues. It's you'll, exp you'll forgive the expression. That's a no-brainer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, the, the only other reason I've heard cited for using metronidazole instead of oral vancomycin is a fear of causing more vancomycin resistance and maybe increasing VRE colonization. But I think Dale, did, did you do a study looking at that? And I believe metronidazole as well increases rates of VRE colonization. It's actually, Curtis Donsky, who did the trial, uh, yeah. uh, but also showed that metronidazole results in VRE colonization. Yeah. And in fact, some well. studies show that metronidazole was the strongest risk factor. But as we talk about Vanco, I think it's also important that we talk about the dose, because uh, we talk about cost of care, and we talk about the fact that cost sometimes uh, shifts people from vancomycin to metronidazole. It is important that the, the, the recommended dose for people with, with, uh, with the first episode of C. diff is 125 milligrams four times a day. This will produce plenty of concentration in the gut, and many doctors use higher doses uh, without really data that supports Vanco, that we're for vancomycin. Okay. And so as vanco becomes main stage of therapy, it is important to remember yeah, that the 100... Yeah, there's actually one small study done in the 80s comparing 500 milligrams four times a day to 125 milligrams four times a day. And there's no difference in, in response. So if you're giving a 250 milligram dose, you're doubling the cost. If you're giving a 500 milligram dose, you're quadrupling the cost versus... 125 million. But you do, but every, I've seen in my hospital, and I think it's pretty common in, in all hospitals, that if a patient is sick and not responding to the lower dose, they always go to the higher dose. It doesn't make sense. Okay. You know, again, pathophysiologically, with that 125 four times a day, you got levels of VANC at least 500 times higher than you need to kill C. diff. So why would giving 10,000 times more, it's not going to kill more C. I'm not, I'm not challenging you. I'm just telling you the but way, the are, way it are is. Are you saying then that if, it, if you're giving Vanco and it's not working, no matter what the dose, it ain't going to work? I mean, assuming that the dose so, is I not mean, I find some of these, I think some of it is these people have had so much damage to their colons due to the C. diff toxins that it just takes a while for them to resolve. What I typically do is I'll just continue them on the same vancomycin dose, and as long as all other parameters are getting better, white count's coming down, fever's going away, becoming more stable. You know, I, I, just, I just stay the course. 